For any naysayers or skeptics out there, it's worth noting that lucid dreaming is a scientifically verified phenomena of REM dreaming sleep. This means it exists. We know it exists because it has direct neural correlates. REM dreaming sleep, rapid eye movement dreaming sleep, is the kind of sleep where you do most of your narrative-based dreaming. Now, usually when you're in a period of REM, the front part of the brain is almost offline, or at least highly deactivated. The front part of the brain is where your sense of self seems to reside, which is why in non-lucid dreams, your sense of self is either offline or highly diminished. Hence, when you have the dream that you're the queen of Egypt, you can truly believe you're the queen of Egypt. In a lucid dream, something different happens. In a lucid dream, this prefrontal cortex at the front part of the brain, and especially the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, has a massive increase of blood flow to those areas. This corresponds with you becoming lucidly aware. So this is how the scientists know that you are actually lucid. The front part of the brain switches on, the Me, My, I program becomes engaged, and I'm able to say, hang on, I'm not the Queen of Egypt, I'm Charlie. Early research into lucid dreaming began in the early 1950s, actually. But it wasn't until the mid-70s that lucid dreaming was first proved as a scientifically verified phenomena of REM dreaming sleep. Now, the man who first proved that was a guy called Dr. Keith Hearn, and this was at Hull University in the United Kingdom. The way Keith Hearn proved this was he managed to get his dreamer, a guy called Alan Walsley, to send a signal from the lucid dream state to the sleep laboratory while he was still asleep. So Woolsey goes to sleep in the sleep lab and he's hooked up to all these scanners and optical scans and stuff like this. And he's told that once you become lucid, try and find a way to communicate with the sleep lab without waking up. Now they thought, well, how can we do this? The guy's asleep. So they tried all sorts of things like putting micro sensors on their little fingers. So when he was lucid, he'd kind of wiggle his fingers and say, yeah, I'm lucid in here. That didn't work. Partly because the body is in paralysis during REM dreaming sleep. But one of the few areas of the human body that is not paralyzed during dreaming sleep is the respiratory system and the eyes, rapid eye movement. So Keith Hearn realized that if he could send some sort of signal through the eyes, a kind of an optical Morse code, while the dreamer was still asleep, they could prove lucid dreaming once and for all. Now, this was quite a task. Because up until this point, lucid dreaming was scoffed at by the majority of the scientific community. They thought it was a paradoxical impossibility. Basically, they thought it was a load of BS and could never be proved. But in 1975, Keith Hearn proved the impossible. He managed to get his subject, Alan Woolsey, to send signals from the lucid dream state to the waking state, thus proving that he was fully conscious within the seemingly unconscious dream state. The impossible had been proved. That was back in 1975 though. So why has it taken so long for public consciousness to wake up to the potential of lucid dreaming? It may have been because the scientific establishment resisted accepting these results. And in fact, it took another man, Dr. Stephen LeBurge at Stanford Sleep Laboratory in California to do very similar experiments and get very similar results a few years later before people really started to wake up to lucid dreaming. More recently, in 2010, 2011, 2012, we've had fMRI scans done on lucid dreamers, these functional magnetic resonance imaging scans that provide a live picture of the brain, which have further proved just exactly what's happening when we have a lucid dream. This increase in scientific knowledge about lucid dreaming has increased press coverage, has increased people's awareness of lucid dreaming in the public sphere. So for anyone out there who doesn't believe lucid dreaming, know this stuff is for real. The awakening of awareness within the dream state is not accompanied by any physiological awakening. To all outward appearances, we are still sound asleep and unconscious. Yet internally, in our dreaming mind, it could be said that we are wide awake. It seems a contradiction to be both aware and asleep at the same time, and this neurological paradox means that it was only in the late 1970s that lucid dreaming came to be verified by Western scientific means. More recently, 
Studies at Frankfurt University's Neurological Clinic and the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry have found that specific alterations to brain physiology appear once a dreamer becomes lucid. Using brain imaging technology, such as magnetic resonance tomography and EEG, scientists can now pinpoint the actual aha, I'm dreaming moment of lucid awareness and its neurophysiological correlates. The researchers concluded that Lucid dreaming constitutes a hybrid state of consciousness with definable and measurable differences from the waking state and from rapid eye movement dreaming sleep. They discovered that when lucid consciousness was attained within the dream, activity in areas associated with self-assessment and self-perception increased markedly within seconds. This means the apparent paradox of being both aware and asleep which had previously caused a lot of resistance and scepticism from the scientific establishment, was simply a failure to understand how two distinct brain regions could be activated simultaneously. Lucid dreaming is for real.